Is Heidelberg United TV. It is round two of the NPL season 2016. It is a glorious day at the Olympic Village, the first home fixture of Heidelberg for the season against the Melbourne Knights. And waiting for us down on the ground is our co-anchor John Fodinos with a very special pre-game guest. Thanks, Greg Blake, and great to see you back on deck after last week's absence. We're down here at the Village for this round two match, Heidelberg's first home game of the season against traditional rivals, Melbourne Knights. Pitch side, it's looking great down here. After a very good off-season, this pitch has really recovered well and looking an absolute treat, so no excuse today. But the Burgers, with many injury worries for this week's game, will look to bounce back after last week's loss to South Melbourne. Right now, we'll take you back up to Greg Blake in the central commentary position for all the team lineups and news for today's game. Thank you, John. And John Fodinos will be joining yours truly, Greg Blake, in commentary for Heidelberg United TV. As we said, NPL Victoria round two. And it's uh, an NSL throwback game. It's Heidelberg United Alexander hosting the Western Suburban based Melbourne Knights, two clubs who have had uh, storied history in Australian soccer and look forward to a big 2016. Heidelberg coming off that galling record 6-0 defeat at the hands of South Melbourne on opening weekend. The Melbourne Knights coming off a 1-1 draw with uh, Green Gully coming into this game. And as John Fodinos rejoins us, John, where does the coach go? I know you mentioned George Katsakis, the coach of Heidelberg publicly apologise to the fans. Does he tell his, does he work on his team from last week? I'm going to say, put that aside, put that behind you. The season starts now. Well, I don't think there's really much choice because uh, as we looked at the team lineups here this afternoon, there's actually five changes in the team lineup. Well, it's a sedate start, but Heidelberg trying to get back on the front foot after, of course, their disappointing result last week. As the ball's played up to Kenny on the midway line, he tries a little flick, but away by the Melbourne Knights defence. And now it comes loose, Harry Noon on the ball, but taken away there and away by Jurkovic. But again, Heidelberg steal the ball. Now to Jack Petrie, he's taken down from behind and it'll be a free kick in a dangerous position for Heidelberg. Referee just asking, issuing some instructions to the players on that uh, Penalty area periphery, Ruben Way smashes it, comes off the kneecaps of a Melbourne Knights player. They relaunch again, Heidelberg. It's been a vibrant start from the home side. Glancing header, no, drops for Kranakaris. Wow, what a way to start. We are four minutes in and Costa Kranakaris gets the match opener from the free kick situation, which was deflected. Heidelberg brought it back in, glancing header from... Harry Noon to Kanakaris, and he nails it on four minutes. It's Heidelberg United, Alexander one. Melbourne Knights nil. Great start. Just what they needed to get that uh, assurance that they're, they're not as crappy as they looked last well, week. Well, Greg Blake, isn't that ironic? This is the man who was just about on the way out at the start of the season, looking for a new club, had a change of heart in the last minute, decided this was where he wants to stay, and... Well, you can't repay it any better than that. Missed out last week, of course, played in the under-20s game and makes his mark straight away in this first five minutes of this game. The Burgers up 1-0. Melbourne Knights on the attack again. Carly with a long throw. Headed away. Only half cleared there. Petrie now with a secondary clearance all the way up to halfway. And Melbourne Knights can see the throw. Knights struggling to get it inside their front third. 
Petri strokes it. Kanakaris goes wide for Harry Noon. Cross goes deep. Ruben Way does his best. Finds a way. Does Ruben. One way, the other. Double coverage. Doesn't matter. The release is there. Cross too long for Kenny. Shooting from a distance. That is a beauty. That is an absolute beauty. And Heidelberg own the game after not even 10 minutes. Jack Petrie with an absolute rip snorter makes it 2 0. This is fantastic stuff. Congratulations all round. They all be feeling buoyed now, won't they? Uh, Joe Fott? Oh, tremendous start by the Burgers. I mean, you could not have wished for a better start after last week. We, we know we're harping on that. But Jack Petrie picked up the loose ball at the edge of the box. A looping shot. O'Farrell was well beaten. And it's 2-0 inside eight minutes. Greg Blake, what a start to this game. And don't know if all the viewers can see, but we've had a few technical glitches here. But that doesn't matter because the Burgers are 2-0 up and well on the way in this afternoon's big clash. Ossie Litch evaluates. Hesitates, then goes long. Kenny's the man on the run. Kenny around the corner, stabs it back. And a corner earned as it comes off Milan Bateur. The season could have stood or fallen on today's result. At the moment, all looking good for Heidelberg. Corner headed clear. Again, they'll come. The, the wide man is Ruben Way. Ruben Way dances inside the defender. Onto his left foot. Goalkeeper didn't know a thing. Goal! Harry Noon. It was Harry Noon, the goalkeeper, had no idea in the end. And Harry Noon makes it three on, t on 12 minutes. We are 12... Jay Fott, we are 12 minutes old. And these boys are sensational. What a sensational... I'm, I'm nearly speechless. and I'm never bloody speechless, John. I'll tell you what, Greg Blake. Goals on four minutes, eight minutes and 12 minutes. But that time, the, only, the ball only half clear. A rasping shot. O'Farrell didn't hold and Harry Noon was there to pick up the loose ball and 3-0 within the first 12 minutes. What a response. You cannot get any better than that. That's the barometer. Stevie Pace back to the goalkeeper again. Heidelberg looking to manoeuvre it upfield. Les Dumbalas dances his way out of trouble to half field. Goes inside for Ruben. Ball too long for the defender. Coming out from his penalty area is Pierce Clark. Belts it long. Kenny on the run. Ball to ground. Noon, goal scorer, the last one. Kanakaris, the first one. Going for two. Looking for that left foot. Oh! Un unbelievable. Unbelievable. Kanakaris nails his second. We are 16 minutes old. I told you we're on a 12-goal half pace at the moment. Costa Katakara's got the first and has now got the fourth. Can you believe it? The fourth. Harry Noon is down, though, as we can see on screen and not looking at all well. I think even more beautifully in terms of, you know, for mathematicians and, and physics professors out there, they're doing it in increments of four minutes at a time. We've had goals on four, eight, 12 and 16. It's a wonderful scoreboard to read if you're a Heidelberg United Alexander supporter what a turnaround from a six goal defeat last weekend to a four goal advantage inside 16 minutes of this follow-up fixture you could not write the script and be believed it'll be a free kick to heidelberg jack petrie if george katsakis the coach wanted a response he should be in incredibly proud of his players at the moment because they have just put a mark on this game. You'd almost say the game's gone for the Melbourne Knights at this point. Which uh, led to a couple of minutes of extra time, it looks like. So we're deep into this first half. Yours truly, Jay Fott and Greg Blake on board here at HUFC TV. Burgers 4-0 up. We're deep into injury time, as we said, in the first half. As Dumbalas goes back to Luke Biles. He clips the ball forward. Looking for Matthew. Now it all falls to Ruben Way. Heidelberg now with a chance. And he makes it 5-0. Well, easy as you like. <coughs> In stoppage time, Kenny Athew went up. The ball fell free to, to Ruben Way. He strolled through and clipped the pass, Michael O'Farrell. And just before half time, Greg Blake, if that game wasn't over by now, well, it certainly is now, as the Burgers take a 5-0 lead into half-time, just about. 
No, this is stunning stuff from Heidelberg United, Alexander. Four goals in the opening 16 and one from Ruben Way, who's deserve, who deserves to be on the score sheet. Ruben Way has been far and away, no pun intended, the man of the match from my point of view. And he's now on the score sheet, joining uh, Costa Canacaris, Jack Petrie and Harry Noon. It has been an astonishing display from Heidelberg United as the curtain is drawn on... You know, Jay, what I reckon we should be going to the record books for this because I cannot imagine too many five-goal halves in matches between these two sides historically. I would have thought so, Greg Blake. I mean, that's an 11-goal turnaround in a half of football. From losing 6-0 last week, the Burgers threw goals to Kanakaris in the fourth minute, Petrie in the eighth minute, Noon in the twelfth minute, 16th minute, Kanakaris with his second, and... Just in injury time there, Ruben Way, the player of the match so far, as Greg Blake mentioned, making it 5-0. So at half time, I'll hand you back to Greg Blake and it's Burgers 5-0 up. And with that, we draw a curtain on this first half. Thanks to Copacabana International and Technologies 2000. Join us back here on Heidelberg United TV for the second half of this quite remarkable fixture in the Victorian NPL. And I'm not necessarily surprised because Harry Noon copped a couple of big hits in that first half and he wasn't wearing it well. We'll get restart again. The Melbourne Knights with first use of the football in this second half. We'll be heading to the right of screen towards the scoreboard end. Which reads, Heidelberg 5, Melbourne Knights nil. Kenny on the run, sweeps through two defenders. The ball for... The new player on, that's Andrew Cartanos, and they'll get a corner within 30 seconds of the start of the second half. So, corner, Jack Petrie goes deep. Wow, a swing and nearly a miss from the goalkeeper. It's still in dangerous territory. A shot charged down then from Stephen Pace. He hits the deck, ball away, over the line. It's going to be a Melbourne Knights ball. But, gee, Michael O'Farrell, the goalkeeper then, had no idea. Goalkeeper O'Farrell. So early days in this second half. Just two and a half minutes in. in the second period of play is Ruben Way, who's absolutely starring today. Marauding run down the left. Clips it back inwards to the substitute. Cartanos looking to make an impact in this side today. He goes around the outside. Clear... Cl Gets away clean. Gets it into Kenny Matthew. Down to Kanakaris. And, well, it's, thank, thank the Lord it's a sunny day because that might have brought rain on another day. So, a, well, compared to the first half anyway, a lacklustre start to the second. But Kenny, can he produce some magic? He does then, rolling away from the tackle of Gergic. Kenny goes deep. Drags it back. The man on the spot is Kanakaris on a hat trick. Is Costa. Costa in the end. The traffic came and continued to come and continued to come. And in the end, Costa's chance of a hat trick on at that point anyway went begging. He's having his own personal battle there with Michael <laughs> To midfield again. Pierce Clark has been asked the question once or twice and answered emphatically. Heidelberg ball. So they're up by five. Kanakaris two. Harry Noon. Jack Petrie and Reuben Way, the goal scorers in the first half. If you ever want to see a highlights package, watch the first 16 minutes of this game. When you get the chance on HUFC TV, Kenny couldn't beat Gergic. Kenny, this time, Kenny makes it six. Kenny makes it six. <laughs> oh, my golly, golly gosh. So, Kenny Athiu, he had two chances at that and he got it second bite. It's six nil. On Heidelberg United TV, unbelievable stuff from the village. The clash of these two former NSL giants. And today, Alexander has owned the Melbourne Knights 
It is now 6-0, and we're only seven, eight minutes into this second half. Well, Greg, you've got to say that probably was poor keeping. The ball headed back in by Lewis Hall, the Heidelberg uh, newcomer from this season, and Kenny Athew saw the keeper hesitate and just looped the back header over him and made it 6-0, and this is emphatic. As Andriasevich now on the ball and uh, away for a goal kick to Heidelberg. Kurgic. Stabs one long into Heidelberg half. Good pick off almost by Bricalo. Ruben Way for Dumbalas. Oh, well, that was almost an accidental stop. I'm not sure the goalkeeper knew an awful lot about that. But he got his... Uh, Left hand to it, and it will be a corner to Heidelberg United, Alexander. It has not been the most auspicious day in Michael O'Farrell's goalkeeping history. Read well there by Ben Suri, who ball clipped in by the number six there, Stefan Carley, and just a bit of hesitation there by Luke Bowles. In the end, clears it away for a corner kick, and the Melbourne Knights with a chance from a set play in sixth position after their draw last week. As the ball's flicked in and across the face, a goal! And Grugic with a snapshot header. And Pierce Clark, to his credit, dragged the ball away as it looked to be heading into the net there. So despite the fact that he hasn't had too much to do when called upon, Pierce Clark has been very solid and a nice save that time. As it clipped in again, Double-fisted punch there by Pierce Clark, And eventually the Melbourne Knights will mop up. A nice triangle there by the Knights as they come forward through Glover. Glover now making the run, looking for the number 14 there. Caleb Mikulic and a chance now. And the Melbourne Knights have scored. And it's Colosimo who puts the Melbourne Knights on the scoreboard to make it 6-1. Just for a moment, the Heidelberg defence switching off. And a nice run in there by Caleb Mikulic. Found his teammate in Colosimo who tucked it away over the keeper to make it 6-1. So on 74 minutes, the Melbourne Knights, at least with some consolation on the day. I suspect they won't be feeling too consoled by that. It's been an astonishing defeat at the hands of Heidelberg. And it will be a defeat and a heavy one regardless. But they do get the goal to make it 6-1. Now, thanks to Copacabana International and Technologies 2000 here on Heidelberg United TV. Round two action. NPL Victoria from the Olympic Village. Between these two arch enemies, old enemies. Another chance again as a ball comes free. But this time it'll be Milos Ilic. A chance to have a... Sets the options, gives it away though. And Suri now with the loose ball, spreads it wide to the man that's made a bit of a difference in this second half. Caleb Mikulic gets a second chance, clips the ball in, headed away there nicely by Illic. And now Katanos comes, chance to come free. And the referee blows the final whistle here as the final score, 6-1 to Heidelberg United. Greg Blake, what an emphatic win to Heidelberg United this evening. Well, a jaw-dropping stunner, if you're a Heidelberg United fan, or a Melbourne Knights fan for that matter. Is George Katsakis, the coach, he'll be as happy as a clam tonight. He'll be... Well, I think he'd be enormously proud of his players on their response to that drubbing at uh, Hellas last week. And they've come here this afternoon, first home game of the season, and an emphatic, inspiring victory by the home side. Final score, Heidelberg United 6, Melbourne Knights 1. Just running through the goal scorers. Costa Canacaris opened it on 4. Jack Petri on 8. Harry Noon on 12. Canacaris again, 16 minutes in. Ruben Way, first half, extra time. Kenny Theo 53 minutes in. And then the consolation goal from Jacob Colosimo on 74 for the Melbourne Knights. It was a resounding turnaround, a great way to celebrate the first home game of the new season for Heidelberg United, Alexander. 
We hope you've enjoyed the match on Heidelberg United FC TV. Thanks to the Copacabana International and Technologies 2000 for their support. Great job today, Jay Fott. We'll catch up with you in seven days' time. Here at the Village once again on behalf of all the team, this is Greg Blake wishing you a very good evening. We're here after the game with Heidelberg United senior coach George Katsakis. George, I say a week's a long time in football. What about the highs and lows of this game within a week? An amazing, uh, amazing week in football, to be honest. Uh, you know, we've gone from uh, conceding six to uh, overturning that and, and scoring six. So, um, yeah, look, it was an amazing effort today. But, look, um, I think the, the groundwork in preparing for the week was very important. We analysed the game last week. We... Spoke about the areas where we, uh, you know, created those errors, and um, and we're going to build on them. And uh, as a result, uh, this happens. So you know, I think uh, the boys need a lot of credit for what they've achieved today. And you must have been t terribly pleased with all the guys that that filled in for the guys that were injured and suspended. Well, admittedly, look, um, we we were concerned about the numbers missing today. However, we bank on our depth and the the way we've put together this squad. So we were very confident that the kids coming in would do us a job. And um, you know, it wasn't much to my surprise because I, I understand that, um, you know, the reason I've brought him in is for that reason, to be able to uh, be part of this squad uh, equally and uh, and they've managed to deliver today. So credit goes to those, uh, the boys that got a, a gig today. Yeah, and we were particularly impressed with a youngster like Milos Ilic who did get a, a run last season, but he looked really competent at the back there and it was an able fill-in for someone like a, a Josh Wilkins who was missing today. Yeah, look, I think Milos uh, delivered his message really loud and clear that, you know, um, He's, he's basically put Josh Wilkins on notice now and um, and that's what we're trying to create at the club. We're trying to create a culture where we know that you have to work fairly hard to uh, to earn this you know to earn the, um, the the position or game time and um, and that's what it's about creating a, a bit of an environment where um, you know you you need to fight for your position and, and someone like say Kenny Ethew, who you know was in and out of the side last year hasn't really totally cemented his spot but today went a long way towards doing that. Yeah, look, I think uh, Kenny indicated to everyone, or especially the football world at this level, that um, you know he's a handful to 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 sort of mark, and um, he's he what the input that he had in the game today, and I'm not sure, I think he might have scored the one, but um, the input he had in bringing people into the game was exceptional, and that's that's another side to our um, our ability to build in that last third, and um, you know a little bit different to Kane Shepherd, however he does offer something different, and today he put that into full effect. And some of the new boys like Harry Noon was really influential when he was on the pitch and, and someone like Costa who had a very interrupted pre-season as well. Yeah, look, I think Harry worked up the field really well. He, he pressured the ball every time it was needed to be won. He turned, you know, forced the turnovers quite often. Um, and Costa's come in and, you know, scored two goals, take the initiative and, um, and uh, you know, did exceptionally well after a... Uh, a fairly interrupted pre-season for, for other reasons, but, um, you know, look, he's bounced back and that's a true sign of a, of a good character. So, you know, um, I was exceptionally pleased with that. And a uh, tough fixture next week back here at the Village against Pascaval, a chance to maybe get one back on them for the finals defeat last season. Yeah, look, I think um, we should get some numbers back this week and hopefully make uh, training exciting and interesting. Um, you know, it's going to be a bit of a headache for myself now in terms of what I do and in in, uh, in the formula that we come up with to to combat Pascova, but we have watched them. They're uh, they're in form. They've won two for two, and uh, you know we're going to have to be at our best to get a result. And uh, no doubt the boys will be up for it. Well, George, thanks for your time, and again, uh, congratulations on a big win today. And let's hope it spurs the boys on for a big season. Thanks, Johnny. I'm here with Heidelberg United skipper Luke Bowles. Luke, congratulations on the 100th game and a big win today. Yeah, it was uh, it was definitely a turnaround from last week. Obviously losing in, in the manner which we did so it was very important that we come here and got a result today so um, well we started like a house on fire and to be honest it probably could have been a few more we, we probably dropped off a bit in the second half which is a little bit disappointing which no doubt we'll work on during the week because um, towards the end of the game we let them in and, you know they had a, a little bit of a sniff for a couple of goals and especially after conceding six last week you know we, we can't give away sloppy goals and, and afford to uh, let any team really get a sniff at goal. So um, a little bit disappointed in that at the end. But other than that, fantastic effort from the boys. You know, four four players out injured in a suspension. So, you know, half a, half a new team, so to speak, and everyone done exactly what was asked of them. And um, 
from my point of view, couldn't have been happier. Obviously, the um, massive credit for the young boy in goal. You know, it's going to give uh, Cats uh, a few headaches, obviously, because he, you know, he wasn't, a f you know, he, that was fantastic to see, you know, coming out, commanding in his area, made some really good saves. And um, that's what I can ask for a, for a goalkeeper. And obviously, another one big credit for, um, obviously, Kenny. Absolute terrorised the defence. And, you know, as a as a defender, there's, you know, you don't want to be playing against someone like Kenny on that sort of form. And, you know, there's praise for everyone. Everyone done their jobs. And, you know, Costa scored two lovely goals. He's come back into the side and, you know, he's he's been fantastic for us today. So, yeah, overall, absolutely wrapped with the result. And, um... And after last week, it's uh, we're uh, I think we're we're now level back, at the, on, track, back yeah. on track. So we just got to build on that, and then big fixture against Pascoval. They, they've they've picked up two wins, so you know that's that's what we've got to be looking to do now is is take maximum points off them at home, and then sort of build on that. And uh, how much was the attitude different this week at training? I mean, no doubt the whole team would have been stinging after that result last week because the first 15 minutes was about as good as a, a start as I've seen from a Heidelberg team in a long time. You know, uh, the game last week, it was, a, it was a strange game. It was a strange game. And, you know, don't get me wrong, I was absolutely gutted and, and disappointed with the result. But sometimes you, you can look at the games like that and go, do you know what? Jesus, what on earth happened? That's just one to forget because, you know, I went home and I thought, you know, that's not going to happen again. And to be honest, I was I was very confident we were, we were going to bounce back and, and, and punish someone today. So, but yeah, the the first 10, 15 minutes was fantastic. You know, we pressed high. Harry was picking up pieces in there and, and Kenny was, like I said, just running, running rings around the defenders and, you know, as a back four, you know, we were defended from the front and, you know, we couldn't ask for any more than that. Well, Luke, again, congratulations on top 100 games for the club and look forward to your next 100 with the club. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks.